how to fix cracks in confidence over apartment building. We talked to leading property developer, Crown. But first, some random thoughts. And as always, it's not financial advice. It is, however, what I would be doing if I was about to do what I'm talking about. So if I'm talking about buying a house, I would do that exact thing I'm saying. First home buyer, investor. One thing I've always been saying to people is don't buy units. Um, find living units by all means. Do not buy them. Strata is one of the biggest records there are ever. Only second to the government, of course. I've never known anyone who owned a unit or any sort of strata a place where they didn't have problems. Um, the fees are exuberant, especially if a building has lifts and gyms and swimming pools. Uh, also, uh, there's always an unexpected repairs that need to occur and you have to cough up uh, copious amounts of cash overnight, pretty much. And you seemingly have enough say as to who's going to do the works. However, if you own a unit, there's always seems to be a lot more repairs and unexpected problems than if you just own a house. So if I was buying a property right now, I would not buy anything if I was looking to invest. If I was looking to buy first home, it would be a house. It would be a torrent title house or a duplex. Apparently the confidence tanks and is tanking. So consumer sentiment for July is down 4.1% to 96.5. However, we have house price expectations up 8.9%. To be honest, I'm not surprised because if I was betting uh, this month where the prices will end up being in July, we are 11th of July 2019, I would be saying they may actually still edge up 0.1, 0.2%. Uh, which means I win the bet, but that doesn't mean that I think that the whole trend has turned. Instead, what will happen is that if uh, July is 0.1% up and then 0.1 or 2% up in um, August and then September, October, November, December, uh, similar amounts, it would still be probably under 1% uh, up. Um, after it's gone down, say, in Sydney, 14.9%, we know peak to trough. And yes, there isn't a news report right around now, uh, so July 2019, where a bottoming out uh, real estate is not being mentioned. Only after it's recovered 0.1% in June after falling uh, about 10% on average. If you're in to cold hard numbers, go and see um, Martin North's Digital Finance Analytics a YouTube channel. I follow it. I love it. Uh, I think it's so much value. It's probably the only go-to place if you really want to find out what exactly as far as the numbers is going on uh, and how. Uh, what I did here is I've gone onto domain.com.au, which is my favorite uh, real estate website, and I've uh, searched for a house in um, Taramara, which is up on North Shore here in Sydney. It's quite ex an expensive, nice, leafy, hilly suburb. Uh, four bedroom, two bath, two parking. Pretty nice house. Uh, nothing wrong with that. Uh, 1, 000, over 1,000 square meters, so uh, pretty good. But what interests me is to have a look at the Taramara uh, suburb um, profile for four bedroom houses. So what's happened, as we can see here, is that in 2015, the average was... 1.491, uh, then it's gone up 2016, $1.8 million. Uh, 2017, average was 1.94, so nearly $2 million. It just edged up a little bit more in 2018, 1.963 in 2018, right? And then it just fell off the cliff in uh, 2019, and we are not even halfway through July 2019. So. So we know that uh, from 15 saw 18.3% growth. 2016 was crazy. It was probably that hockey stick that you see on charts, um, um, algorithmic increase, 20.7 uh, uh, growth. Then it kind of slowed 2017, 7.8%. Then it completely kind of halted at 1.2% 2018. And then it slumped 14.5% minus in 2019, which is about the average peak to trough. 
Now, another random thought. Uh, who is buying at the moment? Uh, it's clear that the only people looking to enter the um, property ladder are first home buyers. Uh, they have been looking and they were hoping that the prices will pull back. They have somewhat. And now they've got the new confidence that the price will continue. So if they buy now, they're not going to buy something that's going to uh, decline in value. Instead, uh, they'll make a right move. And it'll probably go sideways. If not, it has bottomed out, right? We've heard that before. So, you know, I, I don't blame them. Why not? Um, I actually talked to the financial controller at my uh, job, who is a big um, you know, property guy. He's got uh, multiple investment properties, and he said there's absolutely no... A reason or um, you know a case to buy um, investment uh, real estate property um, as far as the residential comes because the return is low the expectation of capital gain is uh, at best flat which I, I think is absolutely uh, very being very optimistic but it was very realistic and he said the only people that want to buy are again first home buyers which is what I've seen and what I can kind of sense Plus, we know that uh, uh, credit growth uh, is only continuing somewhat in um, first home buyers, own occupiers, as opposed to the uh, investors. So investors seem to have deserted it, as well as the overseas investors, which is probably the biggest part of this. And uh, nobody's buying these units anymore because, let's um, be honest, uh, Chinese have pulled out. They've been burnt uh, somewhat. Not as much as it's actually going to happen for them back in China. Because let's not forget, I think their property bubble is still huge over there. But it's seeing um, some serious beginnings of the burst. Oh, okay. Another random thought. Remember how I said I'll only tell you what I would be doing. So if I was looking to rent, I'd rent a unit. I'd never buy it. Um, so, But when you go on to domain.com.au, realestate.com.au, and you're looking for rents in the area... Look for something you like. And then when you think, oh, well, you know, it's a two bedroom, it's kind of new, I like it, but it's a little bit out of my price range, $600. Uh, don't think it's $600. Um, call the agent and say, look, I'm really interested. I can move in at such and such time. However, I'm only willing to pay $520. They laugh at you, call the next agent because there are so many apartments out there and they're not going to... Uh, actually put those prices that are, they are willing to take um, on these websites, on these portals, because that's just not going to look good. Uh, trust me, and I know a few apartments in this building that have started very ambitiously at, say, $475. These are one-bedroom apartments here, and they ended up being uh, leased out for $410, $420 after being empty for six weeks. It is the renter's market at the moment. Rent. Please don't be duped. Builders are the ones holding the bag at the moment. They can't sell them. They have to rent them. It's hard to rent them. They have to keep up the straight face. They can't show their cards because if they did, we'd see how desperate they are, which means we'd go in there with really low ball offers, which is what I'm asking you to do, please, if you're looking to rent and buy. Well, yesterday it was business confidence that had tanked and today it's news that consumer confidence has hit a two-year low. That's in spite of back-to-back -back interest rate cuts and the government's tax package. Westpac's monthly survey found consumer sentiment fell more than 4% this month, a result the bank's economists describe as troubling. Householders' views on their own finances as well as the economic outlook over the next 12 months fell sharply. But sentiment around the housing market has improved, with consumer expectations for house prices rising to their highest level since May last year. The boom in apartment building has ended in an ugly bust for some property owners. Three major residential towers have been evacuated in Sydney now. Owners and renters, the victims of a litany of catastrophic building defects. And there's evidence that they may be the tip of a very expensive iceberg, raising questions about building standards, government regulation and protection for buyers. Leading property developer Crown Group has projects underway in Sydney, Melbourne, the US and Indonesia. Okay, get ready. Um, get ready. It's bottoming out. This is what I've been saying. 
I spoke to founder Iwan Sinito, who believes the property market here has bottomed. Iwan Sinito, before we get into the property market as a whole, uh, yet another story today of an apartment tower in Sydney that's had to be evacuated. The residents haven't been able to live there for eight months. Uh, the building was completed almost 10 years ago. This is the third one. What do you think is going on in Sydney? This is actually quite extreme, isn't it, for the whole resident or the, the residents are being evacuated from a building. I mean, this is quite unheard of. I mean, we heard a building that are cracking, significant cracks that can be rectified. But this is about buildings where the developers oftentimes or the builders are, are no longer there. And sometimes it's, we don't know who built it, who developed that anymore. And there's no capacity to actually fix the building immediately. And, uh, and that really is something that's quite major. And this is not the usual thing that we see. Uh, the usual thing is that buildings that are cracking more than five mil millimeters and, and waterproofing that's not working. And, uh, but to have building that has a fire a safety issue is concerning. Um, to have buildings that are, are not safe to live, it's quite concerning. As we are building more and more high-rise buildings, and there are people out there that have not done high-rise building that are getting into high-rise development and sometimes forced into um, trying to build it cheap. I mean, getting the, cheap, the cheapest quote possible, getting the cheapest builder and getting the cheapest consultants to do the work. That's oftentimes they do job, but they, there's not enough capacity within the consultants and the builder to actually supervise or to do a job of this scale. The government is now really being forced towards uh, tougher regulation of the building industry. Would you welcome that? I think it, well, I think it's tough enough already. I, um, I'm not sure what else can we do in terms of improving it, but. Uh... So should the regulation by government be uh, toughened up uh, after they've been building uh, shoddy buildings um, and the answer is um, they're tough enough so I suppose if they were tough enough we'd we wouldn't have these problems a b um, you know that if you I'm pretty sure if you're buying a unit now and you get one of those conveyance and building reports I don't think they're able to tell you if there's any um, you know substandard um, building materials um, being used in this building, whether it's up to standard, as they say they are, that there's very little ways to check if this imported material that was um, supposed to suppress potential fires will actually work, because that seems to be the biggest issue at the moment. So they've let this happen, uh, but let's just uh, leave the regulations the same. This just doesn't make uh, sense. And I apologize for interrupting this interview. I don't normally do that anymore. Plus, I've got this new trial recording software, which means that you are stuck with my mug in the top right-hand corner of it. Um, I just don't know. I mean, more red tapes oftentimes is actually making building more expensive to build. So then how do we stop, uh, as you say, uh, you know, underqualified developers or inexperienced developers building really large developments that are substandard and that are costing, uh, you know, buyers and owners huge amounts of money? Um, I'm not sure how to stop that one there, but I think it's a more awareness about to developers and also to buyers. I think to developers is that I think it's important that they understand that the impact for their business, for their brand, is quite long term if they're building the wrong building. I mean, I have seen developers who don't want to use their name. Uh, they simply do not want to use it because it's been associated with just wrong building. Can you guarantee we won't see mass evacuations from a, from a Crown development? Well, I hope so. <laughs> We've been building for the last 20 odd years and safety is important for us and I'm, I'm glad touch wood that after 20 odd years that we have never had any safety issue, but that comes with a price. Moving to the property market as a whole, data from CoreLogic shows that one in five unit sales were at a loss in the March quarter. Do you expect the June quarter figures to be similar or is, is the market continuing to contract, do you think? We are seeing an increase of um, confidence and we are increasing our prices and because the stocks are moving really fast, we're actually seeing every month the growth of about 20 to 30 percent. So good news everyone, uh, the prices are not only continuing to drop, 
they are going back up. We are seeing an increase of my, um, confidence and we are increasing our prices and because the stocks are moving really fast. We're actually seeing every month the growth of about 20 to 30 percent of our sales now, which is really returning to where it used to be in the good time. Do you think Harry Triggerboff told, told me just after the election that he wouldn't have to discount anymore because the coalition was returned. Do you think that it is uh, that uh, political side and the policy side that's driving the interest from buyers or do you think it's the lower interest rates that, that, that we're now seeing? Everything. <laughs> it's all the things that makes it up. Really one thing is a confident post-election everything suddenly just everybody became positive and I travel around the world and speak to people and they're saying wow that's a great news. Lower interest rate does help in terms of um, driving the confidence of the people but the third fundamental is really, I don't think that anyone like good developers needs to discount because there's no stocks in the market. 30% uh, reduction of building activity and that's a reflection of what happened in the last few years. Mm -hmm. People were virtually either seeing that the market is actually softening, but more importantly, they could not get the pre-sale, oftentimes necessary to actually build building because the bank do require pre-sale of 100% of the funding that you get from the bank. Mm -hmm. Now to get 100% funding of a 300 million to half a billion dollar job would well, do take you about a year to two years in the soft time. So all of these things actually a combination of um, what's happening. So how long do you expect there to be this sustained interest in um, buying your apartments given I mean the signals that we're getting from the Reserve Bank, the fact that they've cut twice and yeah. are expected to cut again, that tells you that the economy is not going great, that the outlook for employment and, yes. and wages is not good. Yes, and, and that's the truth really. I mean this is where I think the government needs to do a lot more than um, just dealing with the economy improvement by interest, but it's a, it's a great tool for property industry. Um, but however, when, when there is a 300,000 jobs are related to residential construction and when mining is actually quite soft, retail is soft, I mean, um, this, is a, this is an easy one to actually push. Ion Sanito, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. There you go. We heard that apparently uh, there's a lack of stock in the market, so I don't know what market we're talking about. And it was 100% on the money when he said that our retail is soft, our mining is a bit soft. And the only thing that's left is construction industry. So we better be building those. I know that another country that builds a lot of those bridges to nowhere um, and uh, high rise apartments and ghost cities uh, that some say will not end up well. So it's important to keep it up. You can only spin the plates for so long. Once again, thank you all. And let's talk again next time. Cheers.